So this is a video I've been meaning to make, but I just haven't had time. And what you're looking at here is a Dell PowerEdge, well actually Precision, sorry, Precision Rack 7920, which is basically a PowerEdge R730 with uh, different branding and software. And I wanted to cover the GPU power output on these. Um, luckily, I have an official Dell Power GPU power cable that came with this rack 7910 because, well, that's that little Quadro uh, NVS310 is what came with this for a GPU, which is, um, yeah, very sad. I'm not sure what they were doing with this because this is a pretty, pretty low end config in general. Single CPU, and I think, I think those are. 8 gig sticks of DDR4, so that's uh, 32 gig. Seems kind of silly, but I, yeah, I don't know. It's neither here nor there. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I got some genuine Dell GPU power cables, not the mystery knockoffs that may or may not be correct. And they do have the proper keying for a PCI Express 8 pen because they have a little notch that sticks out. So that's cool. And one thing I learned about these cables, since the ones I had seen previously were the knockoffs, is they're wired a little bit differently. You got this little gray wire here that's jumping two of what normally be ground pins um, in the R720. It's jumping those two together. So normally when doing pinouts on these to figure out what's what, I would do it power off first because it's only supposed to be 12 volt and uh, grounds. <laughs> but these are a little different, it turns out. And I did ask on Serve the Home forums, and I forget what the answer I was given specifically, but basically it's like some power sensing thing that, that these uh, servers are doing to determine load or something like that, if I understand correctly. Um, so yeah, generally, let's see if we zoom in a little bit more on that connector. So generally speaking, um, to get focused, there we go. So on the right side, the top three are going to be plus 12, bottom one's ground, and then, yeah. These four on the left are ground. But one of these is actually ends up being plus three volts, which is why, or well, 3.3, which is why that jumper is a thing. Let's see if I can get in there. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of tricky. There we go. So you can see it's uh, plus 3.3 volts between. I don't know the official pen numbers, but the second one down on the left and then the bottom one on the right. So you'll get your normal plus 12 volt. I'm just going to use the chassis as ground. I guess I'm going to do it right. You get your no normal 12 volt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. On the top three on the right side. And this one should be the ground. Yeah, this one's the 3.3. And then you'll get your normal ground on the top one, not the second one down, the third one down, and the fourth one down, assuming we're making good contact. I do have tape on these just in case, because I don't want to short something out accidentally. Especially not <laughs> 225 watts. Oh, that'd be scary. The uh, wires get really warm when you uh, short them out and buy plugging the GPU power cables into a Tesla, so don't do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so just kind of an oddity to know about if you decide to make your own cables. Um, moving forward with my cables I'm making to sell, I am updating the design where I'm jumpering. Oops, I'm doing that little jumper. I do have some modular power supply cables I'm going to test that um, don't have that jumper, I believe. 
So I probably will not be listing those as being compatible with the R730 unless I get the time to actually test it. I don't know how I feel about doing that kind of testing though because I don't know for certain what it'll do. So I don't know if it'll damage the video card or damage the server at all. So it's a part of the reason why I haven't gotten to this yet is because I didn't want to f screw around and find out basically, <laughs> uh, to put it nice. Um, these aren't worth a ton of money, but um, they're worth a lot more money than I'm willing to blow up. Like, I'm fine with nuking a uh, R720 for science if there's a benefit to me, but uh, I don't really want to nuke one of these 13th gen Dells. But, uh, yeah, here's the diagram that I use. Let's see if I'll sit there nicely. When I'm this is my reference diagram for when I'm making cables. Um, so that's the face of the plug, riser side. And based on if this is labeled correctly, looks like you're taking pin 4 to pin 6. The jumper to ground. So that leaves you with uh, 3 grounds and 3 plus 12 volts. And there's no really rhyme or reason for it, I just kind of pick. Um, I think it's usually these two pins. I'll uh, Y those together and then you'll just send to one of the random uh, grounds and 12 volts. But, so yeah, it's a minor update. Um, I'm definitely starting to do this with the Teslas. I do, it's a bit time consuming, but I do need to find the time to validate that cable on more systems. I am reasonably confident that it'll work based on the fact that I'm mimicking the design of the official Dell part. It's just personally when I list compatibility I like to be certain about what I'm talking about. I know some people like to just wing it and hope for the best but I'm not that type of person so um, yeah I, don't know. I guess if there's any questions let me know. My assumption is going to be that all of 13th gen uh, Dell servers are going to be like this because with the 12th gen stuff I've checked now, it has all been uh, pinned out where there's no plus 3 volts, it's just all grounds. But um, yeah, I might make a video on how I'm making my ones from scratch, but I did use up all the connectors. So, I have to order more connectors. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that covers it. I, uh, well, eight minutes too long there, but hopefully that's interesting and useful, and thanks for watching.